What's up guys? So today I have a Nissan S13 240SX to review. Now this car is a car that has stood the JDM test of time, holding its weight with cars like the Mazda Miata, the Mazda RX-7, the Nissan GTR, and all of these famous cars that have been used for motorsports like drifting, autocross, and racing. Now this car is a very versatile car, meaning that you can do pretty much anything you want to this car. The one thing that will remain solid throughout all of the modifications you can do it though, is the chassis of the car. So that's where I'm gonna try to focus my bulk of the review, is how the chassis of the car feels. This car was provided to me by my friend Christian. He has another YouTube channel, so make sure you guys check out his channel. I'll put a link right here. But other than that, let's get to driving the car. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, let's put the steering wheel in. All right, so setting off in the Nissan S13. This thing is so loud. Like this thing is insanely loud. And the thing is that like, it's not like it's catless or anything. He just has a cat back exhaust on it and it's still this loud. It could be because the car is completely gutted in the interior, but even on the outside, it, it's, it's insanely loud. And also it burbles and it pops and it backfires and it's great. Man, this exhaust just puts a gigantic smile on my face. So I'm gonna be comparing this car a lot to my FRS and let me explain why that is. When this car came from the factory, it was 2,700 pounds, a lot like my FRS. Also, when it came from the factory, the media reported that it was very low on power. Sounds like my FRS. This car could honestly be called the old school FRS, just because it has so many similarities to the FRS. The difference between this car and the FRS though is that this car feels much more raw. It feels much more like it's a chassis and an engine just put together. While with the FRS, it kind of feels a bit more composed and a bit more fine-tuned. Another thing that this car and the FRS share is that this car is a lot of fun to drive. Like just driving it through this canyon right now, I do have a really big smile on my face. And also that exhaust definitely helps. We're going uphill right now, and honestly, I don't think that this car is that underpowered. Like, I'm not having trouble going up this hill. This car's still running the stock engine, right? Yeah. So how much power does that make? 140 to okay. the crank from the factory. 140 to the crank when this car came out. So that is pretty low on power, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't feel underpowered, per se. It could definitely use more, though, if you really wanted to make it a fast car. <laughs> This car feels really solid, like it definitely does. Going around the corner, it does feel like a solid chassis. This car corners really well, like it does handle really well. I understand why this chassis is so popular in so, so many different kinds of motorsports. One thing that I do notice about driving this car though, is it has a really long hood, or at least it seems like it has a really long hood. Like it seems like the end of the car is like a mile down there. Yeah, this car is really common for engine swaps like LS's, RB26's, 2J's. It can pretty much fit anything, which again makes it so versatile. So this car does not have stock brakes. The caliper's upgraded, there's better pads. Do you have lines on this car? Stainless lines. Stainless lines. And the brakes do feel really good. They have like a lot of initial bite. As you push harder on the brakes, it doesn't feel like you're getting more bite as you go through. It feels like you get the majority of the bite initially and not a lot of gain of the bite as you push through them. Again, that's not specific to the car, or not specific to the chassis itself, it's really specific to this car. This is a really fun car though, I like this car. I feel like I'm scaring the shit out of you right now because you're not driving this car and I'm going through like intense fog. No, this happens a lot. So fun fact about this car, when it came out, Nissan actually marketed it towards like specifically like secretaries and women. I don't know if you knew about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I thought that was funny. It's a good thing that this car is so loud because in this fog, the bikers can still hear us from like a mile away. So I can't really speak much about the interior of this car because, well, uh, there is none. He's completely stripped the entire interior, so there's not much left there. But unlike the cars that we've reviewed in the past, this is one that you're not gonna be buying as like a daily driver. At least most people will not be buying this as a daily driver. So the interior of it is very old school. I mean, this car is a what? Like what year? 89. 89. So you're not gonna really be buying this car for a luxurious interior. You're gonna be buying it more as the chassis. So I can't speak much on the interior, but I can talk about the seat. So this seat is a Sparco Sprint, which is really the lowest down model of Sparco seats. And 
I like it, I like it, but I don't think it's very track oriented. Meaning that I have the Sparco Evo in my FRS and that car grips you a lot tighter and also has a lot less cushion so that you're kind of bouncing around less. This seat would be awesome if you were dailying this car or if you were just gonna do long drives to the track. I think it would be a good mix of that because it has a lot of cushioning and grips you less, but the Evo would definitely be a better option if you were making a dedicated track car. The steering in this car is loose but very responsive. You, can, you know exactly where you're gonna be when you turn the wheel and you have a lot of confidence doing it, but as far as feedback, you're not getting nearly as much as, say, the FRS. Of course, the FRS is a brand new, completely sport-oriented car. Well, this car came out in the 90s, but it still definitely is really good for what it is. Like for the amount of money that you're spending on this car, this is a lot of car. There's a lot of backfire and gurgle in this car. It sounds really good. Like I, I think my favorite part about this car is definitely the sound of it right now. With the second thing definitely being how the chassis feels. Overall, I completely understand why this car is used so often in motorsports and also why people buy it so much. Like it, for, for the amount of money that you're spending, you're getting so much car and also you're getting such a good platform to build off of. Like if you're not willing to spend FRS money, this should definitely be your second choice. Maybe this or a Miata, but if you want a hard top, definitely this. I have a lot of confidence in these brakes. Like when I'm pulling up to that corner right there, like I like, I felt like I was fine. So this car does have a short shifter. So at first I wasn't so sure about the short shifter because when I was first driving with it, I kind of felt like I had trouble knowing exactly what gear I was in because the gears are so close to each other. But now after using it a little bit, the short shifter feels great. Like it's so precise and you know like exactly where you're gonna be. Honestly, the FRS's shifter is like not even close to how accurate this shifter feels. And again, pretty intense because this car is from the 90s. But it, it's an upgraded short shifter, like I said, but it feels, feels really good. It feels really solid. The pedal placement on this car is really good for heel toe. The gas pedal and the brake pedal are very close to each other and also the height of the brake pedal is really nice to where you can lightly or hard press the brakes and you still have complete access to hit the gas. So, I mean, that's definitely gonna help it in its autocross and drifting game. So we're done driving the S13 and that car was amazing. Like that car is so much fun. And I think what's most impressive about it is how little you have to spend to get one of these. Like this car offers so much bang for your buck that that definitely was by far the coolest part about this car. The car handled really well. Like I was saying, it feels really raw, meaning that it feels like the engine and the chassis are like just paired together and bam, you have a car. The FRS feels a bit more fine tuned, but overall, again, for the amount that you're paying, this car is awesome. So there's a reason that this car is used a lot in motorsports and stuff like that, and it is because not only is it lightweight, but it also has a very short wheelbase, and it's inexpensive, like I've been saying. So if you are considering a motorsports car, and you don't want a Miata, and you're not willing to spend as much as an FRS, this car is an amazing option. I'm not gonna do my normal rating system of like five different tiers with five different numbers, because this car is modified, and it's completely different from the cars we've reviewed in the past. When we do newer cars that don't have many, or any modifications we will stick to that five tier system but when it comes to modified cars i really just want to tell you guys how i feel about them more so than giving them numerical ratings because every car that's modified is just going to be different and also depending on how the work and stuff that's been done to it but overall the s13 is an amazing chassis if you're looking for drifting autocross or racing i really enjoyed driving it make sure you guys check out the channel of the owner of this car but that's going to do it for this video thank you guys so much for watching make sure you guys subscribe follow me on instagram snapchat and twitter I'll see you guys next time.